Well, I'm so glad you've decided to join us again this morning. And before I jump into my message, obviously many of you heard that this week our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, made an announcement that now in level three of lockdown, churches are allowed to meet again. And that is good news, but we will keep you in tune and up to date as to when Journey Church is going to open again. I know we're all excited to meet again, but we really, really have to be wise about how we do that. And so we're not going to make any hasty decisions. And so stay tuned, watch all our updates, social media, especially. Otherwise, you'll receive SMS and email communication from us if you are on our database. And we'll let you know when we're going to meet again. But you know, today we continue with part two of our freedom series speaking about the Holy Spirit. And what's quite exciting is today is actually Pentecost Sunday. What is Pentecost? Pentecost is when we as the church Christians celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, which happened after the ascension of Jesus. And you know, the Holy Spirit is mentioned all throughout scripture. We find that he's mentioned in the opening chapter of the book of Genesis and in the closing chapter of Revelation. We think about the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus. Jesus, his mother, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the desert. He was empowered by the Spirit. He taught by the Spirit. He performed miracles by the Spirit. And we even know that Jesus was resurrected. His dead body was resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so it just tells me that if Jesus needs the Holy Spirit, so do we, if we want to reach our God-given destiny. And again, that's why we need to ask ourselves that big question, do I have the Holy Spirit? I'm not sure if you've ever asked yourself that question, but scripture is very clear and it says that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him. It's quite a weighty scripture, but it just tells us it's very important that you and I as Christians have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. But it, it's so true that life without Christ and life without His Spirit is no different to being stranded out in a desert. I can imagine what it would be like stuck out in a desert where there's this continuous thirst for freedom. You just want to get home. You just want to enjoy a meal. You just want to enjoy a drink. And that's what it is like when we don't do life with Christ. We, we're continuously thirsting for something. And the world needs to know, you need to know, that the path to freedom ends at Jesus Christ. When you meet him, you won't have to thirst for another thing in your life. But 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17, I love this. It says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, what does it say? Freedom. And like I said, the path to freedom ends with Jesus. Listen to the words of Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit. John 16 verse 7, he says, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage, speaking to his disciples, that I go away. For if I do not go away, listen to how Jesus describes the Holy Spirit. He says, the helper, what an interesting name for the Holy Spirit. The helper will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. So, so I ask, what is the Holy Spirit going to help me do? Well, the Holy Spirit works in me to help me, but he works through me to help others. And so he works in you to help you, but he works through you to help others. And so God's Spirit really empowers up to empowers us to pick up where Jesus left off, left off. And so his work, the work of Jesus is now our work. It's like in sport, there will be players on the field, but at some point the coach says there needs to be a swap. And so one player will come off and one player will go on. And that's pretty much what happened with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to the earth, did the work that he needed to do. Then he went back to the Father, but then the Holy Spirit came into play. And listen, they are on the same team. The Holy Spirit does not compete against Jesus. He complements the work of Jesus. And that's why we need to partner with the Spirit to continue doing the work of Jesus. And so we're all employed in the same work, but we all play a different role. I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 7, and it says, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, 
but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. And I love this. It says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us, believers that is specifically, a spiritual gift is given to each of us, listen, so we can help each other. You and I can't disqualify ourselves. Jesus said, if you believe in me, I have equipped you with my spirit. And more than that, I've given you a unique ability to do something and especially to serve and to help others with. And so on that note, I'll say this, we, we need to understand and differentiate between a spiritual gift and a natural ability. I may have the natural ability to ride a skateboard or do other things, but that is not a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift in my life would be the fact that I get to teach and pastor a church. That doesn't come naturally for me. Trust me, I have to rely on the Holy Spirit to do what God has asked me to do. And so Jesus also said this regarding the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he said this, you will receive power. That's a strong word, but we think what power? Well, Jesus is speaking about a supernatural power, a power that he gives us. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this is obviously something he said to his disciples, but it applies to us today as well. And when I think of the word power, I think of a toaster. If a toaster is not plugged into the wall where there's no power coming out, it has lots of potential, but that thing's going to do absolutely nothing. And I think it's the exact same for us as Christians. Without the Holy Spirit's power, we are going to be pretty useless in a sense. But when he is in us, he gives us the power and we're going to be able to, let's say, burn, be on fire and make a difference for Jesus. And when Jesus said, you're going to be my witness when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Uh, what is a witness? Well, a witness is someone who God is asking to tell their story, God's story through their personal experience. And so you and I mustn't underestimate what God has done in our lives and simply let other people know what God has done. And you know, people also can see what God is doing in our lives by the way we live. Never underestimate your lifestyle. That in itself is a witness. Someone once said, you may be the only Bible that someone reads. And so we've got to watch how we live. Okay, but I've asked some friends of mine to, to share their witness about how the Holy Spirit has worked in them and also through them. And so let's listen to that for a moment. Hi, Journey Church. My name is Andrew Coles. I bring you greetings from a very warm Nelspreet. We just love your, your pastors. We really do. We honor them. They are amazing. We just, we're just so grateful that you guys are so blessed to have them leading you um, as a congregation. And we watch from the low felt uh, with keen interest what God is doing inside your church. And so when Pastor Andrew asked me to share a little bit about how the Holy Spirit has spoken to me and how he's impacted my ministry and what he's done through me. It was an absolute honor to be able to just share with you today. We've been in Alspreet since the beginning of 2017 as a brand new church plant. And uh, we were up in Joburg before that. And I remember we were given a verse. Someone prayed over us and gave us a verse from one uh, from Deuteronomy chapter one, verses six to eight. And, and really spoke about it was time for us to move to the hill country. And we couldn't understand what that was meaning for us because right where we were, uh, there was a hill. And so we really thought that was the word for us there. Until we came down to Nelspread, I'll never forget, we were driving down this area, um, down from the airport actually back into Nelspread. And I, I looked at my wife and I said to her, you know, this is it. This is what that verse was that was prayed for us. Because no matter where we looked around us, uh, there were hills. In fact, not hills, there were mountains. And uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 says the following, Then the Lord God said to us at Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. And it really just was such confirmation for us to say to us, okay, hang on, that we need, we need to leave from where we are and come to this hill country. If you know anything about Nelspreet, Nelspreet finds itself in the midst of hills all around us. That uh, it, it's, it's in this valley and all around it are these hills. And it was just so encouraging for us to know 
that someone that gave us a verse a couple of years beforehand was now coming to fruition. And it was in that moment as we drove down this road that the Holy Spirit just kind of prompted us and reminded us of the promise that He's given to us. In, we moved here, we've set up church. It hasn't been easy, but we believe this is where God has called us for such a time as this. But more than that, the Holy Spirit in my life has been the ability to be able to see just with the eyes of Jesus. He has given me compassion in, in place on, and times when, when I truly needed compassion. He's let me uh, begin to see the world through the eyes of Jesus. We sing that song, maybe you sing it as well, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. But it truly is the Holy Spirit that allows me to begin to see the world through Jesus' eyes. And so every time we have a time of ministry, every time we have some form of outreach, I ask the Holy Spirit, would you... Would you let me see these people through Jesus' eyes? Would you let me see these people the way you see them? And it's, it's not a nice prayer to pray because when you begin to see the world through those lenses, it truly breaks your heart. It truly breaks your heart for the way in which people live their lives and all that. And so for me, the Holy Spirit has just been an integral part of our ministry. He's been one who has encouraged. He's been one who's comforted us. He's been one who's led us. Um, into all new areas of ministry and into life. But more than that, he has been a confirmation on the calling that he's placed on our lives. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and may God bless you. Hey, Journey Church, your pastor had asked me to share a story with you that I'm hoping will encourage you today. Um, a couple of years ago, we were standing in our church service and next to me was a gentleman in our church who him and his wife had struggled to have a kid for many, many years. Must have been more than about seven years they had struggled to have kids. And I remember sitting there being prompted by the Holy Spirit to pray for this man. And at first I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, what if I get it wrong? What if I say something wrong? And then he's going to hold it against me forever, you know, because those are the fears we have um, regarding hearing the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, I also knew and understood the that that, obedience is better than anything else. And so I put my hand on his shoulder and um, mustered up all the strength I could, but I just began to pray for him. And this is how I know that it wasn't just me, but it was God speaking because what I said had perfectly aligned with what God had said to him previous times regarding a promise of a child for them. And this is how I knew that this is not me speaking. And I prayed for him and he burst into tears and I burst into tears and it was just a beautiful moment. And afterwards, I left him and went my separate way and continued um, going about things. And then months later, he came back to me and he said to me, Hey man, um, do you remember that time that you prayed for me? And I wanted to deny it just in case something was wrong. And I was like, nah, I don't remember praying for you. Um, but I said to him, yeah, 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 I do. And he goes, well, I just thought I'd let you know that my wife and I are expecting our first baby boy. Um, and that was a massive miracle because they couldn't have kids. And in that moment, it gave me the confidence to understand that the Holy Spirit spoke through me despite myself, despite my fears. And let me encourage you, there might be times when you are a bit scared and fearful because you're thinking, well, what if I get it wrong? Here's the reality. God is bigger than your mistakes. God can use things and turn it around. So our responsibility is just to allow God to use us and speak to us and speak through us to bring hope to others. I trust that this would encourage you. Go well and have a great week. Well, just imagine what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life, but also through your life and you know that is only possible when you do life with the holy spirit galatians chapter 5 verse 25 paul speaks to the church and he says this the church in galatia and he says since we live by the spirit that's a daily thing since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit and i can't help but think of dancing it could be some fancy dance like a tango or the waltz or something. And some of you may watch shows like Strictly Come Dancing. And you watch those two people dance and you marvel and you think, how do you get that right? And they sat there in harmony and the dance just looks so beautiful. Well, the only way that they accomplish that is by spending copious amounts of time together practicing daily hour after hour after hour so that they could do what on on, on the big shoulder, they could keep in step with one another. And you and I, God expects us to, in a sense, dance with Him, dance with the Holy Spirit, and be a witness in the world. And so we can't limit our relationship with the Holy Spirit to something we do on a Sunday. It's got to be something we do 
every single day. And so if you had to ask me, how has the Holy Spirit worked in me and how has the Holy Spirit worked through me? Well, there's many stories I could share with you, but it's actually quite strange. Just this week, I had to make a decision and I was stuck and I really did know, did not know what to do. And so I said to my wife, just, I'm going to go for a drive. And I left the house for about an hour and I just drove through our neighborhood and I was just praying and I said, God, help me with this thing. I'm not sure. And you know, it wasn't long until God reminded me of a scripture by his Holy Spirit that, and not a scripture, a, a word of encouragement that he gave me probably about a year ago. And again, it just came to mind. I thought, hey, it gave me clarity and I knew what I needed to do in the situation. And that was simply the Holy Spirit at work in my life. He was helping me make a decision that would benefit God's kingdom, but also my life. And I think the greatest thing about the Holy Spirit in me is that I get to enjoy God's presence on a daily basis. I, I never take that for granted. Where there's times where I'll just, just quiet myself, close my eyes, and just know that I draw near into God's presence. And God's presence is shown to us by His Holy Spirit. And I love that. And so that's how the Holy Spirit has worked in my life. But how's the Holy Spirit worked through my life? Well, two stories that I want to share with you today. One that comes to mind is in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul speaks to that church and he says that they should eagerly desire spiritual gifts. And so I read that at one point in my life and I attended a church service. And during worship that evening, I said to God, I, I desire the gifts of the Spirit. God, don't you want to use me tonight in some way to bless another person? And so during that worship service, a friend of mine actually came to mind and I had a word of knowledge and I thought, you know what, this is something I feel I need to say to this person. And so it didn't feel like much, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to honor that. And so I went to my friend directly after that service that evening and I looked at them and I said, hey, during worship, you came to mind and these words came to mind. And I just need to let you know that God says you need to make a decision. And it was so funny. As soon as those words had left my lips, my friend just went, and she was so amazed at it. And I thought, well, I don't know what it means, but I know it means something for you. And I was just so excited in that moment because I know without a shadow of the doubt that the Holy Spirit used me to help other people. And so he worked through me. And I think one of the most exciting times that I've seen the Holy Spirit work through me is last year in 2019, my family and I, we went away for a getaway to Clarence. And at this resort that we were at, they had this beautiful lake and it was one late afternoon. We had gone there just to go and be quiet and look at the lake. And um, I saw a gentleman come up to the lake there and he was just looking at it. But sometimes, you know, you just look at someone and they catch your attention. And this man was a stranger. I didn't know him. And so I felt the need to go and speak to him, but I really didn't know what to say. And so I just thought, I'm just going to ignore it and maybe it's not God speaking and I'm just hearing things. And so <laughs> I kind of suppressed that unction. I thought, I'm not going to do anything. And uh, anyway, the, the four of us got up and we started going back to our room. And I, I knew I had to go back to this guy. And I thought, no, I don't want to. I'm just going to go. And eventually I said, I was so convicted. I said to my wife, Mary, I said, you know what? You go ahead. I'm going to take my daughter with me. Uh, she wanted to stay with me. And I said, I'm just, I just want to go speak to that gentleman. And so I went back to him and I kind of just cracked a conversation loosely and chit chat. Uh, interestingly enough, I found out that he actually lives not far from where I do. But, um, I said to him, look, well, this is the story. I was standing there. I felt I needed to come back to you. And there's one thing I felt that I needed to say to him. And so I looked at him. I said, there's one thing you need to know. And that is that God loves you. Now, this is a gentleman almost half, oh, double my age. But as soon as those words left my lips, I said, you need to know that God loves you. This man began to cry right in front of me. The stranger, this man, almost double my age. And I just thought, wow, I'm so glad that I listened to the Holy Spirit who told me, Andrew, go and speak to this person. I didn't know what to say, but the Holy Spirit gave me words at the right time. And it was just, again, such an encouragement that, you know, the Holy Spirit is not just there to help me, but he's also there to help others. And so you and I need to make ourselves available to the Holy Spirit. And so friendship 
with the Holy Spirit and obedience to the Holy Spirit will result in two things. It will result in a godly lifestyle. You and I will live the life that God wants us to live. But then friendship and obedience to the Holy Spirit will also give us a level of influence for the sake of God's kingdom. And so I hope that would encourage you to listen to the Holy Spirit and and to be eager to do what he wants you to do. I just think, you know, many of us would save ourselves a lot of heartache and trouble if we would just listen to the Holy Spirit. If it came to relationships, who must I date? Who must I marry? In business, should I do this deal? Shouldn't I do this deal? Should I work with this person or that person? Well, have you ever considered to ask the Holy Spirit? Jesus said he is your helper and he not he doesn't only want to help you in your faith. He wants to help you in every area of your life. It's so exciting. So this morning, what step can you take towards nurturing a friendship with the Holy Spirit where you can keep in step with the Holy Spirit. I know the Holy Spirit is leading you to do something this morning, to make a decision, to be more intentional about living with Him and also for Him. But you know, before we can be the friend of the Holy Spirit, we need to be the friend of Jesus. And you know, Jesus loves you. Just like I told that man on that day this morning, you need to know that God loves you. And if you are not the friend of God, scripture says that you and I remain the enemy of God. So how do we become the friend of God? We become the friend of God through faith in Christ Jesus. It's quite simple. You and I have a sinful nature in us. We live the life that we shouldn't live. Jesus lived the life that we should have. And he died the death that we should have on that cross. And so when we believe in Jesus, we are put in a right standing relationship with God and Acts 2 verse 38. Let me read this to you. It says repent. Now the word repent means to turn around and go in a new direction. And that's what Jesus expects from us. To turn around and live a new life. It says repent and be baptized. Some of us need to after lockdown decide to be baptized. It's not a suggestion. It is a command. Jesus said, sorry, the scripture says repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Christ Jesus. That's where our salvation comes from. For the forgiveness of your sins. And listen here, it says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So it's only after we repent and get baptized and confess faith in Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit can be a part of our lives. So let's take some time this morning to pray before we close. Lord, I thank you that you have not left us as orphans, Lord, but that you have given us your Holy Spirit, which is the gift of God. And Lord, you've given us your spirit to help us, but also to work through us. And I pray for all of my friends that are watching today. Lord, you know where they are in their lives. You know where they should be in their lives. And Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill them. Lord, we know that we can receive your Holy Spirit through faith in you and by repenting and being baptized. But scripture also says that you give your spirit to those who ask you. And so this morning I ask. And Lord, I pray that many of my friends are asking you this morning, won't you fill us afresh? Thank you that life with you is one exciting journey where we move forwards for your name's sake. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, if you've prayed that prayer with us and you've felt led to take a step in your faith, it is really our heart at Journey Church to help you believe, belong, become, build. And so why don't you reach out to us? We have a digital connect card. The link can be found below and and be in touch with us and we'll be in touch with you as soon as possible. And you know, with it being Pentecost Sunday today, my good friend, Johan Minard, pastor at Church Live, about a year or two ago, wrote this book, Live the Third Person. It's some of the healthiest teaching that I've ever, ever read on the Holy Spirit. And I would encourage you to go to Amazon. You can buy this book on Kindle for, I think it's about a hundred rand. And what a good reading. We can support him in that as well. And you know, next week, Sunday, as is custom in our church, the first Sunday of every month, we celebrate communion together. And so before church starts next week at eight o'clock, why don't you grab your emblems, small something of grape juice, a goblet, a cup, whatever you can find, or a bread and a cracker. And we're going to celebrate Jesus together. God bless you. Have an amazing week.